Welcome back to Locked On 49ers. We got a big one today. NFC playoff picture. It's heating up. Couple of seeds, multiple teams. Niners, one of those now at 500 and ready to talk playoffs with one of those teams that they're tied with on the schedule next week. And Jimmy Garoppolo, is he not only playing well, but earning the 49ers potentially a first round pick in the 2022 offseason? That and more coming up on this episode of Locked on 49ers. You are locked on 49ers, your daily San Francisco 49ers podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's happening, everybody? Brian Peacock here, football analyst alongside former AFL, NFL player, Eric Crocker. If you don't know us, we're new to YouTube here. This is episode number two. We kicked it off with a live stream last night uh, following that football game, which was super fun, dominating the Jacksonville Jaguars. The Niners now at five and five. Uh, and this thing just got really, really interesting, Croc, didn't it? As it pertains to the nfc playoff picture because uh wow five and five the niners are five and five they're at 500 playing good football found an identity in the nfc playoffs there's a couple of really up in the air wild card spots the six and seven seeds niners are tied with the vikings tied with the saints now at five and five so they're officially in this thing and playing the best ball we've seen in a while yeah, the 49ers, they, they've they won, what, three out of the last four games. I think that's that's encouraging. You can tell that they're heading on the in the right direction. I think early on, it was them shooting themselves in the foot. And right now, it seems like they are working to kind of overcome that, whether it's coaching or just players having the, the players only meeting. I don't know if that's contributed to this, but they're definitely playing a better brand of football. And, you know, hopefully that continues this week. Yeah, absolutely. See, it feels like they're bullies again, which is they're even getting scraps on the field, getting guys kicked out from the other teams. And so, um, yeah, domination the last couple of weeks, which is huge. So they, they turned a corner for the 2021 season. But if the season ended today, they would actually not win the tiebreaker of those two spots with the other five and five teams, the New Orleans Saints and Minnesota Vikings. Right now, if the season ended today, we'd have the best team in the NFL, the one seed in the NFC with the Packers losing to the Vikings. Sunday, the Arizona Cardinals at nine and two would be the one seed. The Green Bay Packers would be the two seed at eight and three. Uh, the Cowboys NFC East champions, that's not going to change, uh, are going to be seven and three right now. And they're going to be in the playoffs. The Tampa Bay Bucks, who are leading the South and playing Monday Night Football uh, at six and three would be the four seed. And then the Rams, who the Niners just beat at seven and three would be the five seed. Still a couple games behind those teams. We could see. Maybe a team overtake one of those, but it feels really good that those five teams are most likely locked into the playoffs. So the jockeying will be the next two spots, the six and seven seed. And I think it's probably going to come down to the Vikings, Saints, 49ers, Eagles, and Panthers. And that is the order right now if the season ended today. The Seahawks, by the way, looking awful, even with Russell Wilson back at three and seven now. The Seahawks will be the 15 seed in the NFC, which is crazy. Like I think you can start to bury the the Seahawks at three and seven, the bears at three and seven, even the giants. If they win on Monday night football tonight, I'm not a believer in the giants. I'm not a believer in the Falcons at four and six. Maybe Washington can go on a run, but I'm not much of a believer in there. I think it's these five teams for two spots. And right now the six and seven spots would go to the Vikings because they have those tiebreakers based on a conference winning percentage. But as we know, Niners Vikings in week 12. So that stuff's going to take care of itself. So Vikings saints, 49ers, Tied at five and five. Then at five and six, you've got the Eagles. Maybe pretenders, maybe for real. I don't know how you feel about them, Croc. And the Carolina Panthers, who I was most worried about, but that was a big loss for them uh, in favor of the 49ers losing to Washington on Sunday. What are your thoughts on those teams? Where do you think the 49ers stack up there in the NFC playoff picture? Yeah, you know, one team that you threw out there and you talked about the Seattle Seahawks and kind of how they're derailing right now. And I saw some uh, Seahawk beat writers or, or podcasters saying blow the whole thing up <laughs> it's like man you guys haven't missed the playoffs and i don't know how long but you have one down year and now it's just <laughs> blow everything up i'm pretty sure 49 fans wish they've had some of the success that the seahawks have had over the last uh 10 years since having russell wilson at quarterback but russell wilson i saw this efficiency chart jimmy garoppolo since week eight at the very top the highest of the high couldn't get any higher than him and in, in the sense of his efficiency over the last four weeks uh, Russell Wilson, 
dead last. So that, yeah, that's, he's that, there. that's not uh, helping. This is the chart that was tweeted out by um, David Lombardi, right? Yeah. And um, yeah, CPOE, again, completion percentage over expected. I know how Croc loves the over expected stats, <laughs> but quarterback efficiency this year, yeah, uh, in the last month, weeks eight through 11. Russell Wilson's in the Sam Darnold, Jared Goff category. And look, he was hurt, so he only has the last two weeks, and he was maybe still a little bit banged up, especially last week. Didn't look great against the Packers. They didn't put up any points against the Packers, but looking bad again. And if they're going to blow that thing up, I don't think any 49ers fans out there would be upset with seeing Russell Wilson go somewhere else, especially if it's in, like, say, the AFC. Russell Wilson to the – here's the problem. So, actually, th this kind of segues – Actually, you know what? Let, let's pause on that. This kind of segues into the conversation about Jimmy Garoppolo, what he's worth, and what quarterback movement we could see in the 2022 offseason. I want to save that for the next segment. Um, but I want to talk about a few other of these playoff teams really quick before we get to that conversation. Right. And the Vikings coming up this week, the Saints. I think the 49ers favor I think they I think they compare favorably to those other playoff teams. Like, I don't think the yeah. 49ers can be scared at all the way they're playing their brand of football. They can beat all those teams. And we'll find out next week if they can beat the Vikings. Right. You know, you talk about the Carolina Panthers. There's one of the teams in the mix sit right there at five and six, slightly under above. I mean, slightly under 500. But Cam Newton, that was his first start. Obviously, Sam Darnold, he's kind of been up and down. I thought Cam Newton actually played well. Like, he gave them a chance. He was highly efficient. Uh, he used his legs. He, I thought he made some tight window throws. I was impressed with what I saw from Cam Newton, especially a guy who hasn't really been on the team in a long time, and he's been with the Panthers for just a couple weeks. So let's hope that he doesn't continue to kind of build some momentum. Obviously, they still lost to Washington, so his performance led to a loss. But there's, uh, they could be potentially scary. It's the New Orleans Saints to me that they're just falling off the railroads right now. They've lost three straight games. I don't see it getting any better. They lost Jameis Winston for the year. They have Simeon at quarterback right now, and I don't think he's good enough to really keep them afloat. So the Saints, they might win a game here and there, but I don't think they'll be a factor down the stretch. The Vikings, however, that's the team because them they're kind of like, the 49ers. I talked about 2019 when they met up in the divisional round. Two teams that were really kind of built the same. They wanted to win with the run game. Let their quarterback just kind of, you know, play off of the run game and the defense. And the 49ers were able to kind of overpower them. Right now, similar situation where I think there are teams that really underachieved early on and now they're starting to kind of find their stride. 49ers on the two-game winning streak. Minnesota on the two-game winning streak. And that was a great win against the Packers for Minnesota. They're really going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Aaron Rodgers. So Kirk Cousins has it in him. Almost had a near interception that would have sealed the game. But uh, Savage just kind of, he had it, then he hit the ground, and the ball like rolled up to his hip. And that really was the difference in Minnesota being able to really drive down and win that game. But I think that's the, if we had to look at some of these teams that are all in the mix right now, they're the team that you worry about most when really jockeying for that playoff position. But 49ers control their own destiny. We're playing them next uh, this weekend, and we'll see how they do in that game. That, that That's a huge game, especially as it pertains to the, uh, um, you know, who who's over who in the head-to-head yeah, -head matchup. Yeah, the seeding will be huge there, and uh, th there could be a ton of teams and tiebreakers. So every win is important, but this really feels like the biggest win, the biggest game of the season coming up in Week 12 for the 49ers against the Vikings, uh, on par with what it felt like going into the Rams game. Because if the Niners lost the Rams game, I think we would have most be mostly been talking kind of like how the Seahawks are talking about. Ah, not really blow it up, but all right, let's see the young kid, let's see Trey Lance, let's let's start working towards the next year. But that was such a huge win and such a statement. And seeing the way the 49ers are playing right now, seeing the way Jimmy Garoppolo is playing right now, everyone's bought in. Like the fan, and I think that's so important. The fan base, the coaching staff, the teammates, everyone rallying right now. They know what the score is. This is Jimmy's team, and they're going for the playoffs, and they and they're getting after it. So uh, this is a huge game for the 49ers to be above 500, six and five, take a step in that playoff. The Niners will be the sixth seed um, if they win. It doesn't matter what everybody else does. The Niners are going to be the sixth seed, uh, most likely, if they beat the Vikings. Um, depending on what happens with the Saints, I don't know if the tiebreaker, if they're one game off of that conference record. But anyways, I mean, that'll just be huge head-to-head -head against the Vikings. The Saints, yeah, with the quarterback situation, I saw a little bit of Ross Jackson's podcast this morning, host of 
locked on saints and he's like yeah we can't do this go to taste Hill or something got to figure something out there so everyone seems to be reeling a little bit the team that scares me the most is probably you, you hit it earlier is the panthers with cam newton once he gets going i think he's got some weapons on offense uh the the defense is pretty good and young there and up and coming so if i had to place bets right now i'd probably go 49ers panthers but if you ask me again next week and the niners lose to the vikings i might say vikings panthers so this is huge for the 49ers and i think they can get it done and i think uh, and look even when you look ahead you saw what happened with the vikings and the packers the niners played the packers really close and they're the two seed um the 49ers i think would play the cardinals a lot better than they did uh especially the second time with colt mccoy that was that was a pretty disheartening game for the 49ers and kind of the slap in the face and the wake-up call they needed you're definitely not scared of the rams uh the cowboys the bucks you know the, the niners can beat anybody so keep playing this brand of ball niners have a favorable schedule and go get into the tournament one thing i will say about the carolina panthers here uh and one thing i don't like about their chances at making the playoffs is their upcoming schedule the niners schedule is definitely easier than the panthers the panthers have a couple of easy games coming up or semi-easy games they're winnable the falcons uh, have only had one good win on their schedule and the dolphins are the next two weeks for the panthers then they've got buccaneers twice still and then they'll have a head-to-head -head with the Saints for some seeding there. So th this stuff is all going to work itself out. It's going to be super fun in the second half of the year. And you know what? If Trey Lance was playing, that'd be fun. But this is a lot more fun. Right, Croc? To see the 49ers go for it and, and, and play for that playoff mode. Well, the thing is, who's to say that they wouldn't be in the same position with Trey Lance starting every game? I mean, if we're saying that he prepared throughout training camp to be the guy, started week one, had to go through his lumps, when would we see that improvement start to happen for him? Maybe it wouldn't, but, you know, I'm not willing to just write it off and say, you know, have at this point, 10 games in, the 49ers would not have been able to be 5-5 five and five with Trey Lance starting every game. All right, let's move it along. The, the next topic of conversation here is Jimmy G. We talked about it a little bit earlier. How good is Jimmy Garoppolo? He's playing awesome right now. The question I want to ask, though, is... What do you think teams around the league think about Jimmy G? Because if there's there, there's going to be some offseason quarterback movement, right? And as of right now, over the course of the last month or so, since week eight, Jimmy Garoppolo is the highest graded quarterback in the NFL, according to PFF. I think he's got an 85.7 grade. He's playing really good ball. And coincidentally, the 49ers have been playing good ball along with him the last few weeks. A first round pick, Croc? Do you think the 49ers could get a first round pick for Jimmy Garoppolo in the offseason? Um, uh, the he's got some helium right now. You could see some quarterback movement, like Deshaun Watson's probably gonna get moved in the offseason if he can get his off-field stuff figured out. That looks like it's probably gonna be the Dolphins. So that takes the team out of it. Maybe they can't get a deal done. So the Dolphins could be involved, uh, the Pittsburgh Steelers, but you know the Steelers are going to be going hard after, say, Aaron Rodgers, a Russell Wilson first. So when all the dominoes fall, I wonder what the 49ers can get. And here's the thing. They've hinted at it. Is he even going to leave the 49ers? Is Jimmy Garoppolo going to be the starter of week one in 2022? So uh, this is going to be a fun offseason. I just saw a lot of conversation on Twitter Monday uh, about the potential value of Jimmy Garoppolo, and I thought this was a super interesting conversation. And I know you threw it out there with the – the fingers crossed. That'd be, cool. that'd be huge for the 49ers to be able to get a first rounder for Jimmy G in the offseason. I mean, that'd be massive after what they gave up for Trey Lance and really help this thing along. I, you know, if you would have asked me in the offseason what the 49ers would have been able to get for him, I, I would have been, you know, a fourth through sixth round pick, something like that, some type yeah. of day three pick. If you'd asked me early in the season with how the 49ers were playing, I would say the same thing just because. People want quarterbacks, and I don't even think the 49ers have been able, been willing to give up Jimmy Garoppolo for a fourth through six. It's like we might as well just let him play this year. But if you would ask me now, and if he continues to play like this, one thing about the quarterback position, it's all about the market, right? So if there are teams that are they're going to need a quarterback, and you look at some of these teams, and you look at who's coming out in this draft class, it's not just this high profile quarterback class right now you have some guys that are like okay he might be good or this guy he can kind of play but nothing that really moves the needle so do you want to go out and maybe draft a desmond ritter do you want to go out and draft a, a a kenny pickett or do you want to say you know what got this eight-year veteran jimmy garoppolo we might be able to get him for a first we might get, be able to get him for a second i think it is going to depend on how desperate teams are 
But if he can continue to play at this level, which again, the highest uh, efficiency rating uh, quarterback in the league right now since week eight. Now, maybe he's not that throughout the rest of the year, but even if he can be top 10, that's a really good value for another team, knowing 49ers have to move off of him because of Trey Lance. And, hey, let's go get him. Maybe it's not a first, but I definitely can see a second, uh, like, really being in play there. So I I, I kind of I think that they'll be able to move him. It's definitely going to come down to what teams do this offseason. But looking at some of these teams, Denver Broncos, do you want to – what's the trade-off with having Jimmy Garoppolo as opposed to a Teddy Bridgewater or even a Drew Locke? I, I'm not quite sure. But Pittsburgh Steelers, I think that's the that's the one team to look for. A team that potentially still might make the playoffs. They're right there kind of hovering around uh, that seventh seed. But Ben Roethlisberger, he's kind of shot. He's going to be out. They've been trying to develop guys like Mason Rudolph. They've had Dobbs. They've had all these other quarterbacks. Uh, Duck, uh, Duck Hodges. Duck Hodges. Didn't work out. <laughs> But I do think a, a quarterback of Jimmy Garoppolo's caliber could go into Pittsburgh and play well. Like, I, I think that for Jimmy Garoppolo, I think that's the ideal spot. And obviously, we've seen the Steelers be aggressive when it comes to trading for a player that they want, you know, giving up a first round pick for Minka Fitzpatrick, who has, was one year in with the Miami Dolphins. Now, I'm not saying Jimmy's on the caliber of Minka in the sense of them playing at their position, but just the value of the quarterback can push that up and then potentially get a first round pick out of it. Yeah. And, and teams can go nutty with quarterbacks and the 49ers might've done that a little desperation. You miss out on this trade, you miss out on that trade. And now you look around and you think, okay, we got to do something crazy and, and shake this up. And we got to give up a bunch, maybe even more than we're comfortable with a few weeks ago to go get our quarterback. And maybe some teams are throwing crazy first round picks out there for Deshaun Watson and Aaron Rodgers and potentially even Russell Wilson. And so the team that's left over that doesn't have their veteran quarterback situation figured out, especially if they're drafting later in the first round and they, they're looking at the draft thinking, man, uh, there, there's not a lot here that we love. Let's go get Jimmy Garoppolo. We know we can win with him. And I think that's a perfect spot for him in Pittsburgh in that sort of a scenario just to run an efficient offense for the Steelers. And they have a good defense. And, and you go win football games in a similar manner that Jimmy G has done with the 49ers for a long time. Can you get it first is the question. I still think it's a day two pick. Second or third is what the Niners would in, end up ultimately getting for Jimmy G in the offseason. But, man, if he keeps playing like he is right now, and I want to shout out Rich, who was involved in the chat last night. And, uh, and he said, uh, last night, BD Peacock thought it was absurd. With a weak quarterback class and some teams probably wanting to upgrade their quarterback position, I don't think a one is out of the question. I still think it's very unlikely. But I guess, I mean, the NFL is a crazy beast. I'd say I would this. offering a fifth rounder at the trade deadline, and that wasn't that long ago. To go to a one right now just seems improbable for a guy who's making $27 million. But at the same time, if you like Jimmy G, and it's probably a small group of teams that want to go that veteran route that are in win-now mode that Jimmy Garoppolo would want to go to, and you can do a contract extension to get that number down until the – the the cap goes up in 2023 for you. Do, does a team want to be locked into Jimmy longer term? That's another question. So a lot goes into this. I I just can't see a one, but maybe a day two pick, especially if he keeps playing like he's playing right now and the Niners are in the playoffs. I'll say this. If he had been playing like how he's playing now and you lost Jameis Winston for the year, you know, what would have stopped the Saints from potentially giving up a, a first round or early day two pick? You know, I, I think – it might come down to who's desperate and who's not. When you look at Sam Bradford, right? Sam Bradford playing for Philadelphia Eagles. That was the year that Carson Wentz was drafted. The Eagles were able to get a first round pick for Sam Bradford from the Vikings. And Sam Bradford had, I don't even think he had the level of success that Garoppolo has had in the NFL up until that point. So, it, you know, if a team gets desperate enough, they will give you that type of pick. I mean, look at what uh, Sam Darnold got. For, for, you know, the Jets got from uh, Carolina where there was like a second round pick mixed in there, maybe a third or something like that. There are a few moving pieces there, but Sam, Sam Donald had not played good football. No. It was all about what he potentially could be. And obviously right now we're seeing this, the complete opposite. He's doing terrible, but yeah, like it's all about like how desperate is a team at that, at that moment. So um, and I think Jimmy Garoppolo, you look at Sam Bradford's situation and you look at Sam Donald, I think he would get, you get more for Jimmy than teams got for, for those guys, in theory. 
I will say this, and there was already the the rumor from uh, one of the the Patriot. Oh, who was it? Uh, Seth Wickersham that wrote the the book about the Patriots and Tom Brady and all that stuff. And he was talking about how the Niners were asking for a one. I, I'm not surprised at all, and they should be asking for a one again this off season in trade. Will they get it? I don't know. And it's funny because you bring up some trades like Sam Bradford and Sam Darnold. Those didn't work out great for the teams that did the trading. So that's also like you know, okay, that's the cost of doing business. But at the same time. Maybe you shouldn't pay that cost because it didn't help your football team. Maybe Carson Wentz is a good one because, and teams will get really uh, creative with the way they do this stuff, you know, and, and when that, when it comes to the money and the contract and how they get that under the books for Jimmy G next year at $27 million and then the trade compensation. Maybe the Carson Wentz trade would be a good comp for what the Niners could potentially get for Jimmy Garoppolo from the right team. Uh, that trade that happened in February between the Eagles and Colts, it was a 2021 third round pick and then a conditional pick the next year. So that's a 2022 pick. There was a second round pick that could turn into a first round pick. So I wonder if the Niners could do something like that. Okay, well, give us a, a three this year instead of a one that we're asking for. Give us a three this year, then give us a next year too. But if Jimmy balls out for you and you guys go, you know, and he stays healthy and you guys go make the playoffs and win a bunch of games, then that becomes a first rounder in 2023. I could see that. Right be in some sort of situation being the way the Niners would end up getting a first. Like if, if he starts 12 games for you, right. then that turns into a first. And I think it was, yeah, Wentz needs to play 75% of the Colts offensive snaps for that conditional two to become a one. So it's not even, it's not wins. It's not stats. It's just playing time. And I think for Jimmy G who's had a lot of injuries like Wentz, that's probably a pretty, pretty good way to go around some sort of a condition in this, uh, in this scenario. So a lot of interesting stuff. And look, the Niners need extra 2023 picks, just like they need extra 2022 picks early. So that'd be, uh, that'd be a pretty good move for the 49ers. And I could see something like that making sense. All right, let's finish it up here and uh, take a few questions. Uh, maybe talk about the latest with the San Francisco 49ers and the good vibes after a big win in Jacksonville and start looking ahead to those Minnesota Vikings and week 12 next. But first I want to let y'all know about betonline.ag it's thanksgiving and we all know what that means football and uh, nothing gets better than football and turkey and hanging out and stuffing and, and betting bet online has you covered for all the ho holiday season more props more odds more lines than ever before bet online remains your number one spot for all the sports action this thanksgiving head to our new updated desktop or mobile website to sign up today and receive your 50 percent welcome bonus with promo code Locked on to receive that bonus and hang out and watch football and bet on some of those Turkey Day games and then maybe even put some money on those 49ers to beat the Vikings and uh, start earning one of those playoff spots. It's going to be a really fun weekend of football over the course of the Thanksgiving weekend. And it's not just about football. Bet Online has pro and college hoops, NHL, boxing, UFC, even your favorite Vegas casino games. So don't wait to take advantage of all the amazing offers available for the 2021 season. Bet online is the fastest and easiest way to bet on all your favorite sports. Bet online, we're stuffed with deals this Thanksgiving. All right, Crocky, Jimmy G, playoffs. This is this is pretty important that we're having this conversation right on November twenty third. I don't even know what the date is today. Twenty second, uh, you know, late in late in November to have this conversation. We're talking about playoff push and we're not talking about okay let's get the rookie ready um let's not talk about 2022 we're still talking about 2021 i think that's the ultimate sign especially with the way that things were going you know not that long ago about a month ago it was like oh my gosh which way is the season going and the less clamoring you hear about trey lance that's kind of the best news for the 49ers right because that means they're winning and that's going to calm any of this other stuff yeah and, and, and i think that's We've kind of alluded to that, right? Like, you know, nobody's going to really call for Trey Lance if Jimmy is playing how Jimmy is capable of playing, which is right now at a, at a high efficiency uh, rate, right? So if you're if you're getting that level of play from him, you're fine. And I do think, like you said, like a couple months ago or a couple of weeks ago, we weren't talking about the team in this light. And I was telling people, it changes once you win. Like you start if you string together a couple wins, all that negative talk, Kyle Shanahan being fired or on the hot seat and all that, it all goes out the window. You don't hear any of that now. Now, again, a couple weeks later, 
five and five. You had a big win against the Rams. You went to Jacksonville. You destroyed them. Now everybody's in high spirits and they're looking forward to playing against the Vikings. And hey, where can we get? There, there were times where, you know, just a few weeks ago, if you would have mentioned Super Bowl in the same sentence with the 49ers, they'd be like, what? Like, get out of here. You're, you're a delusional fan. But right. I think right now, if they continue to play how they've been playing and kind of keep this hot streak going, and I say hot streak, I know it's only two games, but they can keep this level of play going. Yes, I think you that Super Bowl mindset will start to creep in. And not only creep into the minds of the fans, but creep into the minds of the players as well. And I think that's what's more impo most important here is them believing the type of team that they can be. Kyle Shanahan's probably been telling them, Demico Ryan's has been telling them, hey, if you do this, do, do this, we'll win games. And we can be that uh, team that we aspire to be. But it starts now, and I think this this game this weekend, that would be a huge test for that. Speaking of D'Amico Ryans and that secondary, I've got a question here from Steven, and uh, he, he tags both of us, but he's he's talking to you, Croc. He wants to know what the scouting report was on that secondary, how you thought Norman played, how you thought Mosley played, uh, how you thought the, the, uh, the Tart and Hufanga mix was in the 49ers secondary on, on Sunday. And is this secondary a deep playoff caliber secondary right now? Yeah, I think they've been playing well. I, I think what's not a deep caliber playoff position team, uh, part of the team right now is the, is the defensive line. Like, I think the defensive line is still struggling to get that pressure. Obviously, Nick Bosa, he's having a crazy year. He's, he's doing really good. 10 games, 10 sacks. But the rest of the defensive line, just not being consistent with getting back there, and that makes it tougher on the secondary. Now, secondary, even then, they have done well. I think the big thing that they've done, and I've been telling people, I was, I've been saying it, like 49 secondary is not bad. Like, it's not bad. It's not a bad secondary. It, they, they had some penalties not go their way early on, and I think that was making people think that they just suck. I'm like, they don't suck. They've been playing well. Well, now, the last couple of weeks, you take away the penalties, and they look like a whole new secondary. They're, they are playing well. They are challenging guys. I think to continue to like improve there and get better is going to happen up front with the defensive line. Got to get more pressure. I feel like Josh Norman's finding himself a little home now, feeling comfortable. He was shouting out the rest of his uh, teammates in the secondary after the game, wearing a nice little suit post-game um, and working the peanut punch to perfection. He's got, I think, what, five forced fumbles? I think he leads the league in yeah. forced fumbles right five. now for the 49ers man so yeah some penalties but he's also trying to create turnovers which is pretty important is what that defense needs so that's pretty big and mosley's been awesome on the other side like Mo i love man mosley he's a dude uh, a, a lot of people ask me like what can you do about the penalties or all oh, the 49ers are bad and and, and, I'm, and i've been saying on the show i don't equate bad defensive back play and penalties right like i don't think because you get penalties you're playing bad because it's all subjective one game, you can get called for four flags just because of how the ref wants to call that game. But then over the last couple of weeks, the pass interference call for the most part has been non-existent. And even one of the calls that they they uh, they flagged uh, K1 Williams for against the Rams, that didn't even look like pass interference. So that's why I was telling everybody, like, settle down a little bit. I know you guys want to replace every secondary member, but – is you can't the flags is tough and i don't even know if there's anything you could do in practice do you think that practicing that vertical go route thing whatever they were doing in practice all of a sudden made it to where they oh. don't get any pass interference calls against them like no it's just how the ref sees it at that time i will say i mean you mosley played it pretty darn perfect on the go ball down the right sideline against the Jaguars, and he turned his head and he got his eyes on the ball. So I think maybe that was part of it. Maybe guys were just playing the man a little He's too much. He's been doing that. That's chest to chest. So when okay. you're getting kind of short quarters of the, of the like, near the end zone, you want to get chest to chest and look through the receiver because he can't beat you on a go route down there, right? It's just not enough space. So now you get to him, you get to his chest, you look through him and work to knock away the ball there. He tried to do that against Michael Pittman, but instead of getting his hands on his chest, that hand slipped on the outside and it wrapped him up. And people are like, he bear hugged him in the end zone. That was an accident. But I've seen Emmanuel Mosley use that technique several times. De definitely not the first time that I've seen him do that to get his head around and make a play on the ball. Yeah, and it's a technique thing that gets sometimes awkward, right, with two human beings jostling for position. You see it with DBs all the time with wide receivers, and you see it with offensive linemen and defensive linemen. And there's a place you can hold a guy. You just can't get those hounds hands outside where everybody can see it. And so there's a there's definitely a technique and an art to to grabbing and getting away with stuff. 
uh, as a DB and as an offensive lineman. And uh, the great ones are really good at it and don't get called as often as some other guys that make it a little bit more obvious or get in bad positions and maybe even get lazy. Uh, I want to finish this up with Kung Fu Cody on Twitter. He said, uh, he sent this out after our live stream. He said, man, I just saw this and was on for like the last five minutes. Hopefully this becomes a thing. Kind of weird putting actual faces to the voices I hear every day too. I don't know if I like that. <laughs> so I want to apologize <laughs> to Cody and everybody else for our faces, but you're going to get a lot of our faces. Uh, me and Croc are going to be here every day, uh, not only on the audio podcast, as always, Spotify, Apple, everywhere you find podcasts, you can find Locked On 49ers. But now on YouTube, we'll be doing some more live streams uh, as well on YouTube. So make sure you hit that subscribe button. It's super important. Croc and I appreciate it as we launch this YouTube channel. Find us on YouTube, hit the subscribe button, hit that bell, hit that thumbs up, uh, and we love you for it, and we're going to be doing it. We're, you're going to be seeing our faces as much as you don't want to. Me and Croc back every single day. We appreciate you making us your first listen. Talk to you tomorrow right here. Locked on 49ers. Peace.